Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to make this cute low poly planet with you and it's a fairly simple design but there are a lot of objects to distribute so I'll try to make this quick so we keep the tutorial short. If you enjoyed this video please leave a like, it will really help my channel to grow and if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see content like this in the future please hit that subscribe and the bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Let's jump into empty Blender file and I will just select all, press X and delete. And now let's create a sphere, so let's press shift A, mesh, and I want to create icosphere, I think that's an ideal object to start with, so let's open up this additional menu here and let's increase subdivisions so we have more geometry to work with, let's zoom in a little bit with the mouse wheel and now tab in. So I want to start extruding some low poly terrain here, so let's go to the face select and let's try to select these hexagonal shapes there. So if you go over multiple faces like this, you should be able to select them. And I don't have like an exact guide what to select now. So this will be a little bit creative for you as well. So let's just hold shift and select some more of these hexagonal pieces here and there to extrude some terrain. Something like this maybe here. And don't forget the other side as well, though I will mostly focus on the front side of the planet. Okay, something like this should be fine. And now let's just press Alt E and extrude faces along normals and extrude a little bit of a terrain like this. Don't worry about the height, we'll add water later, so something like that. And now Let's just select new faces on top of that. And we'll extrude once again. So press Alt E and extrude along normals. This time make it a little bit smaller. Now let's select this one here. Extrude once again. And maybe we can extrude like one triangle to make a hill. So this will be the shape of our terrain. Now tab out and let's press Shift A and add another icosphere. You will see it's the same size. And now just tab in and make it slightly larger. So this will be our water surface. And I'm doing it like this because I don't want to like select all of these faces that should be water and then assign material to them. We'll just assign one material to the whole sphere. So this is the basic terrain and now we'll need some objects. So let's press Shift A and we'll add a plane press G then X and move it to the side here, press tab and make it smaller using S to scale like that and now I want to create the tree so let's press E to extrude, E to extrude once again right click to release in place and S to make it larger and E again and now we can just hit M and merge at center. So this will be our low poly tree, now tab out, let's press shift A, let's add another plane, press G then X move it here, tab in and make it smaller. So press S, resize it like this and then S and X on the X axis and now press E to extrude. Now go to the edge select here, select these edges, right click and choose subdivide that will create this edge in the middle. We can press G then Z and move it up. So we got ourselves a little house that we can use here. And now let's press shift A, let's add another plane, move it to the side tab in and make it smaller. Now S then X to scale it up here. Press Ctrl R to create a loop and increase with the mouse wheel just like that. And now select this edge at the end, press M, merge at center and same with the front. This will be a little boat. So press A to select all and extrude it down. And now we can select this edge right here, press M, merge at center, same here. And now we can slide these vertices. So go to the vertex select, select this vertex here, press G twice and slide it. 
Now press 3 for face select, select these top faces, press I to inset, E to extrude and now hold shift S to snap cursor to select it, tab out and let's add another plane, let's make it much smaller here and extrude. Ok and now we can go for edge select, select this edge on the side, press shift D and X to move it slightly and press E then X to extrude it just like that and now we can slide this vertex by using G twice and we can move this up so select the edge press G then Z and move it up so this will be our little boat now we can join these so by holding shift select the objects in the object mode and press ctrl J to join them and now tab in press A to select all and move it slightly up so something like that so this will be our boat now tab out and let's press shift A and this will be the last object so move it to the side press G then X make it smaller and now we'll create a small airplane here so let's press S then X to scale it up like this E to extrude now create a cut here near the front and press ctrl B to bevel and we can select this top face so 3 for face select press G then Z and move it up and we can additionally extrude it and make it smaller with S now let's select the front make it smaller and same in the back here we can move it up slightly now we can add another cut here select the top face press E to extrude S then Y to scale it down and S and X and move it back ok and now let's add another loop cut here select these bottom faces there and press Alt E and extrude along normals ok maybe not so much and press S then Z to scale them down and S and X ok and wings in the back as well so Alt E extrude along normals S then X something like this should work just fine ok maybe the tail is too large so let's make it smaller and move it closer to front and now if we look from the side the airplane should be higher up so in the edit mode we'll press G then Z and move it up like this and we'll leave the origin point there so there will be our point of snapping ok now that we have our little library of objects we can distribute them around the planet so let's go here and in the snapping options enable face snapping align rotation to target and the individual elements if you now select the tree press G you can hold control to snap it around but we'll be creating a lot of those so every time holding control might be a little bit tedious so if you press shift tab you will enable snapping you can do this here as well so with snapping enabled you will just always place the object snapped so now we can just press alt D to link duplicate and duplicate a lot of these trees around our planet just like that let's create a little forest here okay something like this and now let's just create some variation by making some of these trees smaller so just select these objects press S to scale okay something like this should be fine and I know I'll probably get this question in the comments why I don't use geometry nodes for distribution like this or something um, and I know when you have a hammer everything can look like a nail but here I really enjoy the manual control over the scattering where I just move these trees how I see fit and then scale them create that variation and just navigate using my eyes and my feeling I really like this workflow unless it's a thing that really requires computing and can't be done manually 
or in some fashionable time, I will just always default to manual control. And then if I have something larger, I would consider using geometry nodes. So now let's select this house and we'll find some placement for it as well. So press G and just move it somewhere on our map. And maybe let's create a small village here. And if you want to rotate these objects, remember you can rotate around the local axis. So if you press R and Z twice, you can rotate them like this. Okay, let's add one here as well. Okay, should work just fine. Now let's take a boat and move it somewhere here. And now it's a good time to consider adding camera. So I really like this angle right here. So let's press Shift A and let's add a camera. And now I will hold Control Alt and press zero on an numpad to place the camera on our view. And then don't forget to disable snapping. We can just press G and Z twice to go further away. And now let's set the ratio to something like four to three. So 1600 to 1200 should work okay that should be fine so now let's place the boat in a way that it makes sense for our camera view and i want another one probably down here somewhere and then we have this airplane here press g and move it somewhere here this will be a little bit more like dominant object here with a little bit of more focus Okay, um, the last thing I miss here is some clouds. So let's reset the cursor by holding Shift S and let's press Shift A. Let's add another icosphere. Now let's reduce the subdivisions to one, make it smaller and press G then Z and move it up like this. Let's look from the front by pressing one on an numpad and now tap into the edit mode and just press Shift D to duplicate it like this, make it a little bit smaller and again on the other side. So this will be like a very stylized cloud here. Okay, let's look from the camera and I really like this. And now I want to move some of these around our scene and we can use cursor for that. So hold period and switch pivot point to 3D cursor. Now, if you press R, you will rotate around that. And if you press R twice, you have this free trackball rotation so I will use that to position the rest of the cloud so I'll press Alt D to link duplicate and R twice to move it somewhere else and remember you can always press G and Z twice or R and Z twice to adjust the local transformation And finally, we can add some sun here. So press Shift A, let's add another icosphere. Tab out and just move it to the side here. And we can hold period, switch back to the medium point for our pivot point, make it smaller like this. And here we'll have a little sun. Okay, now let's try to frame this a little bit better. And let's create a background. So let's press Shift A, let's add a plane. Now let's press N for a side panel. And now with plane selected, hold shift, select the camera by selecting this frame here. And now go to the rotation, Z, right click and copy single to select it. They will rotate the plane, same as the camera. And now we can tab in, make this larger and move it down so it doesn't get in the way. Now select the far edge, press E then Z and move it up. And now we'll just bevel this. So select that edge, control B and increase with the mouse wheel. Tab out and shade this smooth. Let's go back to our camera and basically our scene is ready. So let's limit our render with control B, drag a selection here. And now let's go to the render properties and enable ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflection. Now let's switch to the material preview and let's enable scene lights and scene world. This will be a little bit dark. So let's press shift A and let's add sun. And I want to go all the way to somewhere like three, press G, then Z, move it up. And the distance doesn't really matter. 
I just want to be able to rotate it around the center. So let's switch back to 3D cursor and just tilt it slightly like this. And it only makes sense that the light comes from here if we have sun there, but don't budge too much over like the realism. The goal is to make this look nice. And I'll press Shift A and add another light. This will be the area light, press G and Z, move it up. Now press R, X and 90 to rotate it 90 degrees and R, Z to rotate it to the side here. And I think something like 50 should be enough. And this will be like our soft light on the other side to make these things a little bit more visible um, and make these shadows a little bit brighter. Okay, now for the colors, let's just select our sphere with the ocean and let's create a blue color material here, something like that. Okay, and let's increase roughness. Now for the background, we want some really dark color here with the roughness all the way up and we can go slightly blue there. Now let's select the clouds and I think the full white material with full roughness should be okay. Let's select the sun and you probably guessed it. This will be the yellow color, full roughness. Maybe make it a little bit more vibrant towards the orange. Okay, something like that. Now select the terrain and let's make that green. Okay, and trees can be a darker green. Now select the house and let's add the white material we used on the clouds, but create a new material slot. Let's click new and let's add red color material with full roughness. Now tab in, select the roof faces, select the red material and click assign. So there'll be our roofs and now we can add yellow material to our boat and we can add a new material slot here. Let's pick the white color and assign. So you can see how I'm keeping the palette fairly simple here. Uh, I'm reusing a lot of colors because this is a stylized illustration. So the less colors you use, the less distracting your artwork will be and it better should look in the end. So now tab out, select the airplane and let's go white color there. Now we can create a new material slot. Let's tab in. And now we can press Ctrl R to create a loop cut on one wing, on the other as well. Now Alt Shift to select that loop cut again and press Ctrl B to create the bevel, reduce with the mouse wheel. So we have these stripes there and click assign. And now we can choose the red material from the list. Now go to the face select by pressing three, select these loops by holding Alt and Shift and let's assign red material there as well. We can do the same for the tail and select the cabin faces. And let's create a new one there. And this should be like a darker blue or something. Okay. And increase the roughness. Right. So um, that's it in terms of colors. And now we'll just play with the lighting. So first of all, I will go back to the render setting, switch this to cycles. I will use GPU and enable denoising both for viewport and render and I will reduce the render samples to something like 512 and the tile size as well. And now I'll hold Z and switch to render it. So this is our cycles preview and I quite like it, but we can improve this quite a lot. So let's rotate this a little bit. Let's press shift A and let's add a point light. Now let's look from the top. Let's press G to move it somewhere here. And now let's press zero on an ampad and move it down. So it hides a little bit behind our planet. So this is the final placement we are looking at. And now if we really ramp up this light to something like 3000, you can see the reflection on the background and this will create this nice halo around the planet. And now we can just change the color to some blue. And this is already much better result with a nice halo around the planet. I really like this. And now let's just go to the world settings and let's add some of that ambience to blend it. So we can go a little bit higher on the brightness and a little bit of a violet color. You can see it on the clouds, how these shadows get filled with that color. Okay, this is it. And now there's still a lot of contrast and hard shadows. So let's select the sun 
and I want to increase the angle there. You can see how these shadows go softer. And I really like that result here. I want this to be nice, soft and smooth. So let's go to the color management. We can switch this to medium high contrast, I think, and increase the exposure. So it's a little bit more vibrant. And I think I left the roughness settings on the green material here on the 0.5. So let's increase the roughness there as well. So that's your planet basically. And now you're free to play, you know, like with the color shades, um, with the lighting, um, you can try different colors or maybe a night scene with a moon, uh, whatever you like. So that's it from me uh, for today's illustration. I really hope you enjoy this one. Um, if you did, please don't forget to leave that like. It will really help me. And again, if you're new and you like to see something like this in the future, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.